Absolutely. I think there has been a bit of a slowdown in investment in new energies. We know we are only at about a, dare I say, a trillion dollars a year at the moment, and we need to get to three and a half trillion. It's a big gap. Uh, obviously, the, the appalling war in, war in Ukraine and the focus on energy security has said, let's do everything. A and that squeezed a bit of uh, the impetus out of new energies. So I think that's one thing. I think that will come back. Uh, secondly, I think oil and gas companies are not the best indicator for what's happening to new energies. After all, their primary business uh, is the production of oil and gas. Uh, and investors are always slightly intolerant of companies that go and do things other than uh, what they were originally designed to do. Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, does more incentive then need to be given, particularly to these entities, to engineers as well, uh, in order to, to move the needle along, particularly when it comes to renewables? There's no doubt. Uh, and uh, that's happened in the United States with the Inflation Reduction Act, uh, which is well known. I think that needs to be copied around the world. Uh, the important thing about government help is it, it reduces the risk profile uh, and the help needs to be removed when the risk is removed. Yeah. So I think that's an important feature people need to build in. I just want to go back to something you said about the oil and gas companies, the traditional oil and gas companies who uh, are increasing oil production but also increasing their investments in renewables of what they would call low carbon technologies. Is there some sort of a paradox here in that the the, the, the architects of some of the biggest fossil fuel emissions in the world are also now the ones who are evidently trying to provide the solutions. I don't think there's a philosophical you know, debate. Uh, the fact is that they do know something. Uh, I speak about the oil and gas industry. They do know about big projects. Uh, they do know about how to get things done, how to procure things. And actually, they should be focused, certainly, on decarbonizing hydrocarbons because we will need them for a long time and it would be great if we could stop methane going to the atmosphere, very powerful greenhouse gas, and cut out CO2. But some of the other things, uh, I think investors always say, give me the money rather than diversify, let others diversify. So there's an open question at the moment about what they can actually do. Can I just ask your opinion on the windfall tax? Uh, obviously, many corporations have been against it for obvious reasons. If you are uh, enjoying some record profits and you're not going to be liked to be taxed. Uh, but at the same time, the argument was that it would disincentivize these firms from investments. That doesn't appear to be the case, though. No, there's degree and degree. Uh, uh, the thing about windfall uh, taxes, and I, uh, when I ran BP, I was subject to this many, many times is their jurisdiction dependent. So where you make the money, so you need to be taxed, not taxed worldwide. Uh, and secondly, there is a limit. Uh, I do recall at one stage in my career, we were taxed at 101%. That was very <laughs> disincentivized. <laughs> that was not good. We actually had to subsidize the, the tax pay, the tax paid. Mm -hmm. So it's a balance. Uh, and the important thing about windfall profit taxes, if you put them on, you have to take them off. They have to be dependent on the windfall. But it's right to tax windfalls if you can design the tax correctly.